So my name is Michelle Alexander and I am a senior lecturer in bioarchaeology here at the Department of Archaeology at the University of York. I am the co-director of the MSc in bioarchaeology we have. So the master's course here at York is particularly distinctive for being a kind of dual purpose really. So firstly, you will learn all about um, human bones and osteoarchaeology, so how to look at those bones, how to age and set skeletons, and also learn about how we look at health and um, paleopathology, so disease as well on those skeletons. But we go beyond that into the molecules themselves that survive within those skeletal remains that we find on archaeological sites. So we can look at isotopes to understand diet. We can also look at the proteins uh, within those um, surviving tissues to understand something about health and disease. Um, and we also work on other materials too, so not just uh, bone, we also look at artefacts materials you find also on excavation and what, where one of the key places um, worldwide really for undertaking organic residue analysis of pottery remains in that. So we have a very wide remit here uh, which I think is um, really key um, to getting the experience um, of all the different kind of applications of bioarchaeology um, within, um, within what we do as archaeologists. York is a fantastic place to live. Um, I have loved living here and it was in fact one of the, one of the places I really wanted to live um, ever since I was an undergraduate. Um, so yeah, it's a really friendly city, really welcoming city and to just be around and surrounded by the heritage that's here is fantastic. The other thing that's really important to our students is the opportunities that there are in the city for them, in particular working with York Archaeological Trust or the plethora of archaeological uh, commercial units we have. So a lot of our students go and do either volunteering or um, work um, with those organisations, which is really, really useful um, and um, valuable as part of, alongside their degrees. So one of the great things about the Masters here at York is the fact that a lot of the techniques and instruments and laboratories we have are in-house. So instead of sending samples away, um, you get to actually work with them within um, the laboratories we have and the instrumentation is here that we use to analyse them. So the kind of skills we are looking for um, our students to pick up are um, skills surrounding um, the knowledge of how to work with ancient biomolecules with these very um, poorly preserved uh, materials and um, also then those laboratory skills that would be related to a particular interest or specialism that might be related to their dissertation. Now those dissertations can be on biomolecules or um, they can be on also um, human osteoarchaeological uh, methods too. And the other great thing about being at York is that you get taught human osteology by um, commercial osteoarchaeologists. Um, so they lecture for us and they also have a unique insight into what's going on with um, human bone um, activities in the commercial sector as well. So one of the great things about our course is that also the students get involved in our current research projects. So particularly for their dissertation, projects, what will happen is um, you will be twinned with one of the members of staff who will have a range of projects available and those will be uh, projects that often um, result in being involved in publications as well. So a number of our past master students are actually uh, published authors now, um, uh, working on the same materials that we have here. And the kind of projects that we offer range totally from the early earliest moments of prehistory through until um, almost the present day. Um, with, we've got great um, expertise, particularly around the time of the Mesolithic and Neolithic, uh, but also looking at the medieval period as well, particularly from my perspective. So after doing the Masters here at York, um, a large number of our students go on to do um, other postgraduate studies, so as PhD students, for example, but we have had a number of students go on successfully to become um, technical experts. So they might be technical support individuals in schools, in and other universities and also research groups uh, um, internationally um, and then otherwise um, you also have the knowledge to kind of go into other areas of um, uh, the workplace which could involve uh, key skills and research um, and also things like the civil service and also other professional areas. Mm -hmm.